This morning that he wants the current county executive removed from office. Oh, but that's not all. He's also... Dave Gordon has made some accusations of what he calls abuse of power. And he believes... David Gordon says he has proof that current Oneida County Executive Anthony Pacenti abused his power relating to a personal relationship. Names, dates, uh, circumstances, things like that, those will all be given to the authorities. Here's Pacenti's response. He says, quote, today, Mr. Gordon made unfounded and slanderous allegations that I will not dignify with a response. on the 10th floor of the county office building. There's a big difference. If Pacenti had an affair with whomever, wherever he frequents, like the Turning Stone Casino, that's not our business. But what goes on in the county office building, well, that is. The county executive has tarnished the office that he represents, having had this unethical and corrupt arrangement with a former staffer. I'm appalled and completely disgusted, as the people of Oneida County should also be. Pacenti held at McCann's previous family-owned restaurant, Piggy Pets, in New Hartford. He then offered McCann a job working as a staffer in his elected office at the county office building. As things heated up, McCann was rewarded with an unprecedented pay raise of 20% in 2008. He got a rise and she got a raise. This at the expense of the taxpayers of Oneida County. 
In June 2010, Vesenian McCann discovered that she was in fact pregnant. In one of the biggest cover-ups in Oneida County history, Vesenia immediately demanded that Caitlin move to Charleston, South Carolina to hide the evidence of the affair. For 15 months, McCann would live in South Carolina, pregnant with Vesenia's child, away from her own family. She was ashamed and totally in love with Vesenia. The Oneida County executive, her boss, whom we believed she thought she would one day end up with, sent her away. Today, we search for the child of Vesenia. We believe that Vesenia either made Caitlin give it up for adoption or that the child was sent to live with relatives. One thing for sure, Vesenia never took care of his responsibilities and deceived the people of Oneida County.
we got another guest on the phone line here this morning, correct? We do. Tracy Brown's on the line, I believe, calling from Boulder, Colorado. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. Is that one? In the race for a 90 county executive, you analyzed a, a five minute uh, press conference by the current county executive, Anthony Pisani, where he's denying these allegations that Dave Gordon has lodged against him. So once, you, once we talk a little bit about your introductions, we're going get, to get into your findings from that report. Got it. Well, yes, I am a body language expert. That's what I do. And I've spent the last 20 years reading people, uncovering secrets hidden in plain sight. I've been trained right alongside uh, the FBI and <clears throat> Uh, uh, police, Green Berets, and so uh, instead of going the law enforcement route, I um, I work a lot in business, and I uh, help folks like Dave, and um, I help banks and credit unions and financial groups prevent fraud, because a lot of fraud happens right in front of your eyes. So my job is to equip people to help build their bottom line. And you've been doing this for how many years, about? 20 years. NBC, CBS, Fox have asked this body language expert to talk about some of the secrets uh, hidden in a plain sight. And she's joining us here on the show, Tracy Brown. She's a deception analyst. Is that is that a proper term, proper terminology? Um, you could say that. I'm a body language The, the issues that convinced you, based on your experience, that you believe the county executive's response to the the media the media we were all there at the time and we did not have a chance to answer questions why you believe he was being deceptive okay so first uh and you just said the first thing right there is that he kept saying i'm not going to talk about this again i'm not going to answer questions and he said he said i'm not going to talk about this again probably four or five times and that that's a hallmark like this is the last time i'm going to talk about this that is a hallmark verbal tell of deception so um so i knew i i had a good clue right off that you know he's he's hiding something here and uh and then i because uh deception detection comes at the intersection of body language tone and words Mm -hmm. and so uh tone is actually a huge indicator and it can be a higher uh uh, percent of accuracy than than body language tone tone you said tone yeah, yeah because it takes six organs to uh, for humans to make a sound, and it's very, very hard to control. Mm-hmm. And that's why people in Hollywood make the millions of dollars that they do, because they can control it convincingly. And so uh, deception is um, it's kind of interesting, because it runs on this uh, continuum on, on tone when it gets to anger, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, he, he was right in the middle of the bell curve of where anger lies, because he was, or, sorry, where deception lies, because he was angry. Right. He was just angry. He wasn't outraged. Right. Because outraged people from when they're outraged from the get go, they uh, are usually telling the truth. OK. Angry people, which is where he was, are um, usually lying in a situation like this. And then you got the people who are conveying information. Right. They're super calm. They're just telling you how it is. Those people are truthful, usually. So. Um, so when I saw that, I'm like, all right, so he's got two hot spots. He's not going to talk about this again. And he's angry. And, um, and then, you know, he's talking about this being a statement of, of, uh, I don't know how he phrased it, like tell, telling you what's going on, like a statement of what's going on for him. And, uh, <laughs> he, um, spends most of the time attacking, right? He doesn't actually spend most of the time talking about, uh, what, happened he spends uh, maybe 10 percent of the time talking about what didn't happen not what did happen right like truthful people are most interested in revealing the truth and they will tell you what happened and how this could have been misconstrued things along those lines he didn't even do that so um those are the biggest tells that i saw and then you know i to the phone line, Tracy Brown, body uh, language expert on our uh, phone line. In the conversation, essentially Dave Gordon and what uh, the county executive was responding to were allegations that uh, the county executive had had an affair with a staffer a number of years ago and that potentially that uh, she got a raise while she was there as a benefit of that affair as well as the fact that they might have had a child together and that the county executive and, and the woman individual are covering that up. And that essentially is present. And, and I think if you go back and listen, one thing that people might say is that 
the county executive did not specifically state a specific allegation that he was denying. He, he essentially had a general response that pretty much saying that Dave Gordon's allegations, there's no truth to anything that he said. Instead of saying specifically, I did not have an affair, I did not give her a raise, I did not do this or do that, essentially a blanket statement saying that whatever Dave's talking about is junk. Is that telling in any way from your experience as, a, as an expert in this field, or, or is that something that just might be word choice? Truthful people are going to be more interested in the truth, and, and they'll explain that truth to you, and they'll use fewer words to do it than someone who's explaining away um, or covering up something. So um, I thought his uh, comment was, was pretty telling in that way in that he really tried to stick to generalities instead of saying, yeah, you know what? There was someone, we didn't have an affair, right? Or however he could have put it, right? He could have put it a hundred different ways. So um, I thought that was kind of interesting as well. Tracy, one of the things you wrote in your report, just if you could clarify this, I said, you, you say, he, he says, anyone who knows me knows this is not true. And you mm-hmm. say, this is a textbook example of a deceptive tell. What did you mm-hmm. mean by that? Well, when people, uh, it, from time to time, when people are deceptive, what they'll do is they'll start to uh, build an invisible uh, uh, group of supporters around them. So it could be anything from like, well, we all feel this way, right? Well, who who are all, all these people, right? <laughs> and um, so, so those are the kind of statements that, that you look for as well. Anytime people can uh, build this group around them that gives them a little bit of security and um you know it, it just adds up to deception almost every time uh, well 839 on the talk of the town i think we have a, a call